aspect of data quality we need to consider is the presence of outliers in our data. Now, the first thing we need to consider is, do we need to even do anything about outliers? Many algorithms don't rely on the assumption of linearity and normal distribution. In those cases, outliers might be just fine to keep in your process. So you should not rush to eliminate outliers right at the get-go. Now, of course, if you're going to do a linear regression for any process that you're working with linear regression, you want to address those linear model assumptions very carefully and consider removing outliers for them. So we've got a couple approaches we can use. And let's take a look. We've got two rules, and they basically depend on whether or not the data is skewed to a large degree. And the first one is the empirical rule. The empirical rule basically says, I'm going to keep everything within three standard deviations of my mean value in this data set for this attribute. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. That's uh, often called uh, the 99.7% rule, 99.7% uh, of your data in a truly normally distributed feature should fall within those three standard deviations, which covers all the meaningful range of your attribute. The second one is using the IQR, the interquartile range approach. And we can come up with that by working our way through the Tukey test or the Tukey box plot approach, which uh, you've seen uh, in your data understanding and exploratory data analysis activities. All right. Both of these identify some kind of a theoretical min or theoretical max with the empirical rule. Of course, it's three standard deviations plus or minus uh, the, the mean plus or minus three standard deviations. With the Tukey, you take uh, your, your um, box boundaries, the first quartile, and then subtract one and a half. IQRs, which is the interquartile range, uh, that's the difference between the first quartile value and the third quartile value. And then the upper range would be that third quartile value plus one and a half times that IQR. All right. So either way, we are dealing with this. And of course, it's worth noting these are theoretical. Uh, we're expecting the values that way. So here, the empirical rule, um, one of the interesting things is if you lay a Tukey box plot on top of a normal distribution for a, an exactly normally distributed attribute, then they sync up very nicely. Of course, we turn the Tukey on its side here. All right, so let's see how that works in RapidMiner. So we've got our Retrieve Lending Club small. Let's do a, let me see if I can find my Tukey operator. Yeah, I've got a Tukey test operator here. What this is going to do is it's just going to go, I'll go ahead and run it first off. I'm just running it against all the attributes. I can tell it to ignore missing values. In uh, this case, I just left it at the defaults. So when I ran it, I get these results, which is basically my initial data. But if I scroll over to the right, I'll find some additional columns. So you can see now I have 82 attributes or columns in uh, the data. I originally started off with 35. So let's scroll over to the right and see what we have here. So here I have Tukey test for that first numeric attribute, which is loan status numeric. All right, and then I've got the confidence interval. All right, so you can see here, the summer identified as out, bottom outliers, no outliers, or top outliers. Okay, so in this case, we're basically, this is a categorical, I'm gonna ignore this one. Let's see what we have next. All right, the loan amount. All right, that's not a bad one. So I can see here, this is no outlier. And my confidence for that uh, is higher and higher. And as we scroll down, uh, 
I think we just passed one. Yeah, so we can see this is an outlier on the top side. So this is something that you can do easily in Excel. I'm going to flip over to Excel. So I took this LC small data and I just created a bunch of descriptives for it. And yeah, here's the loan amount. So you can see skewness is within tolerance, kurtosis slightly uh, negative, excess kurtosis that is. And I calculated my quartile values here. So with my top IQR and my bottom IQR would be 38,000 and 2,000. Uh, the empirical method, uh, that one definitely came up with a, high, a value, top value higher and a bottom value lower than the loan amount. Now, because this one isn't suffering from super high skewness, you would expect the IQR and the Tukey method to come up with reasonably similar amounts. Now, if you've got highly skewed data, let's take a look at this revolving balance over here. Look at the uh, kurtosis on that and the skewness. And we can see here that, yeah, the IQR approach gives me 40,000. The empirical approach gives me 80, almost 88,000. And then the IQR approach gives me negative one, two, three, four for the bottom IQR versus negative 54,863. So this is highly skewed data. We'll get to that in uh, just a little bit. Okay, so I can use those Tukey test examples and then I could filter based on uh, no outlier or outliers, uh, depending on what I want to do and choose which fields I do this for. Now, I by default did this for all the fields. I don't have to. I could just say I just want to do it for a subset of the field. So that's the Tukey test. And that's just a quick way of evaluating what you're working with. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and act on that and remove those values from my data set, so this, that Tukey test doesn't remove any values. It just gives you the calculated uh, outlier status of each uh, item in your data set that you've uh, chosen to run the test against. All right, so let's go ahead and take those outliers and remove them. So if I go to blending, I think it's examples. Yeah, filter examples. So I'll drop that up here and okay. So let's set this filter. I'll use custom filters and I'll add the filters and I only want, uh, let's use the IQR approach because I have positive values for both of those. And this will give us a better idea. Remember if your distribution is uh, reasonably close to normal, then the empirical method might suit you better. Otherwise, if you have skewed data, the IQR approach is probably better. So I want the loan status to be less than or equal to, and I'm going to deselect this pre-select comparators. That'll give me the full list. It tries to give me a curated list if I don't do that. So I want load status to be less than or equal to 38,000. And I also want the loan, less than or equal to 38,000. And then I'm going to add another entry. I also want loan status to be greater than or equal to 2,000. All right, so I'll click OK. And now I've got my two rules. This is what will continue through. I could also output the original data set, but I'm more interested in, OK, what did not match my filter? Let's see what we pulled out. Okay, so I run that. Oops, I must have said loan status on one of them by mistake. Oh yeah, I want loan amount. So loan amount, loan amount, less than or equal to 38,000, greater than or equal to 2,000, click OK. Now run it. Okay, so I've got in my examples that made it, uh, oh, these are the ones that actually got pulled out, 437 examples. And I can see loan amounts less than 2,000, loan amounts greater than 40,000. So that means 
10,055 passed through that filter. So I've removed my outliers this way with the filter examples tool. All right, so that is dealing with outliers. Let's get back to the uh, reading and see what we'd like to do next.